私はカコンシスのイルーシアこの国を守るために共に頑張りましょう追撃しろカコンシスのために作戦を執行する10年前あの出来事が起こって以来私はもうそのような感情を忘れてしまいましたこの手でヴィンセントを葬る時こそ私の罪が償われる時 Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the way to build Elusia, who is the other new hero that was released on international server on Thursday, July 2nd. So, slightly making a change to these videos, I'm going to do a very quick summary of Elusia first before going into greater detail about her. Her basic role is a high defense tank, and specifically, she's an aquatic tank. She has the Triton skill of Juggler, so what it means is her attack is equal to 1.4 times her defense. In addition to that, her soldiers generally have good damage reduction percentage, and because of that, she can also make a good tank for s l e p n i r Finally, for her third skill, she generally has a wide variety of skills to choose from. For example, she can bring two tanking skills to have permanent. Tanking ability. She can bring an AoE for her third skill. She can bring a single target strike skill. And finally, she can also bring Chain Hook to pull someone to her, which you can then finish off with another character. Clearly, that wide variety of skills makes her quite a strategic character, which is quite suitable since she is part of the Strategic Masters faction. Her other faction is Legion of Glory. So, Realistically, Legion of Glory, if you're going to use a tank, it would be Leaden. But if you play Strategic Masters and you want to use an SSR tank better than, say, Vargas, Elusia is quite viable. Elusia's talent is called Flower of Summer Lake, and the effects are as follows. When she's in water, the unit's movement type is considered aquatic, and physical damage taken is reduced. She will not die when taking fatal damage and instead will recover a certain amount of hit points. And this effect can only activate once per battle. So, just like Vargas, just like Emilia, she has a revive ability and she takes reduced physical damage. Next, after being attacked and entering battle, she will cause the enemy's terrain to be considered as if they were in water. And this is a debuff that lasts two turns on the enemy. If the enemy unit is already in water, then there is a percentage chance to stun the enemy, and the stun lasts one turn. So, pretty unique effect being able to stun an enemy that attacks her if they're considered in water. So, in some ways, you can say she is actually pretty darn good in countering a wide variety of characters, including Juggler, because of that. Juggler, in particular, is considered in water, so if Juggler ever Tries to attack Elusia, she can stun him or have 50% chance of stunning him, anyways. Other than that, in terms of the bond requirements, you need the Knight of Mystery for her fourth bond. And the fourth bond is all that matters for her, given that she converts her defense into her attack. The fifth bond is unlocked with Oliver's help, so I mean, you would only level up the fifth bond mainly because you want skill. That's Purely for countering Omega, who can otherwise ignore the soldiers and attack her directly. So, now let's talk about the maximum stats for her classes. Okay. She has access, her classes are Serpent Master, which is aquatic, and Royal Vanguard, which is a Lancer class. Not too much to say there, you know. Lancer, as usual, has higher hit points, has the highest amount of defense, but significantly lower magic defense as a result. The Serpent class has a bit less hit points, but still quite high. Still very high defense, higher magic defense, and higher skill. Last but not least, her soldier boost is 40% hit points, 10% attack, 35% defense, and 15% magic defense. So she just has extremely high defense and hit points on her soldiers as well. But clearly, this soldier boost is not offensively oriented. So just like how Vargas can never really kill off anybody when countering attacking, The same will occur for Elusia because the soldiers will not take out the enemy character soldiers. The only way she will kill someone in general is if the enemy's player's soldiers are already damaged. Then she's just attacking to finish off those soldiers with her soldiers, and then her attacks will all land on the enemy general. Moving on, 
Elusius Heartbond. In the Serpent Master class, which is really the only class you should be using, at level 4, AoE damage taken is reduced by 10%. At level 7, when Elusia is in water, physical damage dealt is increased by 10%. And at level 10, all hero stats are plus 5%. If you somehow have her in her Royal Vanguard class, which you shouldn't, but if you do, at level 4, when attacking and entering battle, damage taken is reduced by 10%. And at level 7, when attacking, soldier damage is increased by 20%. And at level 10, of course, all hero stats plus 5. So in a lot of ways, you can almost say that Royal Vanguard is better for the heart bind effect, but I just don't see you wanting to use her in Royal Vanguard in general. So let's just move on. So here we are going to talk about her most useful skills. So her awakening skill, the three cost skill, is called Icy Realm. The thing about it is, it has a four turn cooldown. A very important thing to note. The, this is important to note because despite the four turn cooldown, this skill only lasts two turns. So you cannot run Icy Realm only if you ever plan to use it because you're going to have two turns of downtime, which is absolutely massive. But what it does is just like Triton, when you're in water, you replace your attack with 1.4 times your defense, and you tank physical damage for adjacent allies. Its active effect is that your guard range increases by 2, and you gain the buffs Water Control and Icy Realm. Water Control considers you in water, Icy Realm has a command effect where all enemies within 2 spaces of you are considered in water, and they cannot act again. But last but not least, it lasts 2 turns. So one thing to note about Icy Realm as well is all of these buffs are dispellable. So it's not like Wind God Realm or Leden's Righteous Duel. These buffs are dispellable. Next is Triton. Triton is very similar to Icy Realm. 3 turn cooldown, lasts 2 turns, take physical damage for adjacent friendly units, and when in water, convert 1.4 times defense into attack. So next up would be the Endurance skill which is a one point passive. This passive has the effect of at the end of action, if damage was not dealt, you recover 20% of the unit's hit points and you also gain water control. This lasts two turns. So endurance, in my opinion, is pretty much a must bring skill because it permanently puts her in water. And it's also a skill that allows you to heal up. So it's just a great skill. And the combo of Icy Realm, Triton and Endurance just makes Elusia very very tanky in general. Even if buffs get dispelled on Elusia, as long as she ends her turn, she's in water again. So it's just a great combo overall. As for some other useful skills for Elusia, let's say you don't plan to bring Icy. You can choose to bring Mirage, which attacks enemies from three spaces of her and deals 0.2 times AoE damage and inflicts ranged soldiers with range minus one. This debuff of reducing ranged soldiers range lasts two turns. And if the enemy is in water, they will be also be silenced. This also lasts two turns. And after use, you gain in water, that lasts two turns as well. So in water should really just be water control. But basically, lots of useful effects. Silencing debuffs, um, you know, range reduction debuffs, all these good things. It's just the big limitation of it is that it's a self-targeting spell with only three range. So that is some major limitations to it. But very, very useful skill overall. And finally, the last skill that I consider useful is Chainhook. I use Chainhook a lot with Lester, so I don't really need to introduce the skill I feel, right? Four range skill, pulls the target to you, deals a small amount of damage to them, and applies mobility minus two onto them. This, I mean, this is the very first tank that actually can bring Chainhook as well. So it's, uh, it's a nice thing to see, you know? It makes Elusia a viable tank that can also chain hook targets for you. Let's talk about her other four skills. And of these four, I would say two of them may occasionally have use, and the other two are totally useless in general. Uh, skill Intimidate, reducing enemy skill within two squares by 20%. That is really, really useless in my opinion. You have to move close to the enemy in order to be able to reduce their skill, and it only lasts one turn. Kind of a, a really awkward skill and for two costs it's just not worth it. 
The other one that's kind of useless in my opinion is Tenacity. It's a one point skill where when you're attacked, you get plus 5% defense before combat begins. And this buff lasts one turn and can be stacked. Elusia inherently already has ridiculously high defense. Um, you really don't need to stack more defense. Yes, stacking more defense could increase her attack and so on, but at the end of the day, given the choice between, say, tenacity or something like endurance, I would generally choose endurance instead. You know? Although tenacity might have the occasional use for PvE content, where you're taking tons of hits. I don't know. That's the only situation where I can imagine it can be useful. As for the other two skills, surfing, it's her attack skill, right? It deals 1.5 times damage to the enemy uh, in melee range, and after combat, you can treat all passable terrain as water when moving. Last is one turn. I generally, I put it in the other skill section because I don't think it's anywhere near as good as the other options. Um, so not much else needs to be said about that. In the first place, if you're going to use Elusive as your tank, why would you have her try to do attack skills, right? You have other characters for attacking. So that's why I don't really think it's useful. And finally, Heavy Shield. When you're attacked with a melee attack, you have a 25% chance to reduce damage taken by 50%. This kind of effect also kicks in for your soldiers. It may have the occasional use, but I put it in the other skills section because 25% chance is a very, very low chance at the end of the day. So, but occasionally you might want to bring it. You never know. Just like how we've seen Emmerich bring Heavy Shield in PvP successfully, no. I can't rule this skill out, so I just wanted to mention it. But to me, I just feel like the first five skills are the more useful ones overall. Okay, so let's move on. Hero Awakening Materials. Her Awakening Materials are actually the exact same as Shalinka. So you're going to want five Splendid Stardust, eight Life Crystals, eight Barrier Crystals Okay, for the first Awakening. For the second Awakening, you're going to want 12 Pure Monsoon Hearts and 12 Pure Molten Hearts. Kind of annoying that Shalinka and Elusia both use the exact same materials, but then again, you're probably not going to build up both heroes, so it is what it is. Now let's move on to talk about Elusia's soldiers. Now before I begin talking about her soldiers, it's important to note that Elusia, her talent does provide 20% physical damage reduction. So that 20%, since it's talent based, will st apply to the soldiers as well. So every single value of damage reduction here is increased. So, as a result, her best soldiers are all the soldiers that have damage reduction in general, and they would be the number one soldier for her would definitely be the Tide Elves, because they, first of all, their attack deals magic damage, which is interesting. But secondly, the more important part is that when, as long as they're on the water tile, they reduce physical damage taken by 45%. And they also get an attack increase of 20%. Okay, That second effect is not a big deal to you. The main thing about these Tide Elves is that they have that 45% physical damage reduction. Then you add another 20% from her talent at 6 stars, meaning these Tide Elves have 65% damage reduction. Just like that. So, if you choose to bring the Heavy Shield skill and it kicks in, as a side note, that 65% plus another 50% puts the tight elves at 115% damage reduction, meaning they take no physical damage whatsoever. So that's just an interesting point about potentially bringing heavy shield. So those are the tight elves. Next would be the stone colossus soldiers, because these soldiers, as long as they're below 70% hit points, all damage reduced by 30%. Keep in mind that the stone colossus or Lancers in general have another technology, Continued Combat, which adds another 20% damage reduction if your hit point is below 70%. So that means Stone Colossus have 50% damage reduction if below 70% health. And combine that with her Elusius talent, and that means the Stone Colossus actually have 70% damage reduction if they're below 70% health. Yes, it can sometimes be difficult to get knocked down below 70%, but at the same time, if you use Tiaris as your healer with Healing Light, you may very likely tank hit after hit, and then Healing Light would heal you back up. So it's very possible to trigger this effect with Stone Colossus. Maybe not for PvP, but for PvE content, definitely. And then finally, her third soldier choice with damage reduction is the Highland Warriors. 
Highland Warriors would not be good as a soldier choice for PvE content, but they may occasionally have use in PvP. And Highland Warriors would be useful because they have the attack increase of 15%, and they'll have all damage reduced by 15%. That's their special effect. Infantry Training Ground also has the Emergency Treatment Tech, where you get another 20% damage reduction if your hit points is above 80%. So that makes 35% damage reduction for Highland Warriors, add the 20% from Elusive Talent, and they actually do have 55% damage reduction against both physical and magic attacks. So that's why Highland Warriors would also be a very viable soldier choice. The last one that I consider kind of useful would be the Lava Titans for Elusia, and Lava Titans would be useful just in certain maps, and it's purely for the burning effect of Lava Titans. That's it. But there are times where you do need that 30% for fixed damage. You know, for example, we see you sometimes bring Vargas with Lava Titans, Bernhardt with Lava Titans, right? So, so there may be situations where you want Elysia to bring Lava Titans. They're not a primary soldier for her, but they would have their use. So you can see, ultimately, her bread and butter soldier for sure is the Tide Elves, and then these other three options are situational, may see occasional use kind of soldiers. As for her other soldiers, Elusia has access to the Merfolk Warriors, and their special effect is that they increase attack and defense when they're in water. It's not damage reduction, so that's why I have them placed in the other soldier section, because Tide Elves are by far the superior choice in general for Elusia. She also has access to the Hellhounds, and Hellhounds apply a debuff of increase damage received to enemies within two blocks of them after combat. So it's very very awkward to use. The only time I've used Hellhounds is for one battle in Ancient Beckoning on Juggler. That's it. So I just don't see them as a very normal soldier to use in general, even if you have them leveled up. And finally, her final soldier choice is Heavy Calvary for some reason. Like, frankly speaking, nobody uses Heavy Calvary. Nobody should use Heavy Calvary. They're the worst soldier in the cavalry branch in general, so you should not even have them leveled up. So now let's talk about Elusia's equipment. So Elusia has a wide variety of equipment, as with most tanks, and she has a wide variety of enchants as well. So for her best gear, my opinion is this is a defensive set for Elusia, where you're going to run Oath of Justice, Last Rites, the George Feathered Crown, and Swordsmith Medal. So this aims at maximizing your defense in general, as well as providing a good amount of magic defense increases. So that way, your defense is very high, allowing you to be an incredible tank, and your magic defense is reasonably high, allowing you to potentially tank magic strikes. The enchant here, I have it set as two hard rocks and two crystal enchants for 10% defense and 10% magic defense increase. So that's just one version of the enchant that she can run. So secondary gear is a more offensively oriented set. So for this set, you have Ragnarok, so that when you attack, you can do fixed damage to the enemy before combat. Once again, you're going to run Last Rites and the George Feathered Crown. And then your last piece of equipment is going to be the Divine Boots, because those gives defense and plus one mobility. So with this set, you would have a four mobility tank who can also attack and do fixed damage to the enemy before combat, which would also trigger the George Feathered Crown, giving her 15% defense and magic defense increase before combat begins. Those would be her two general best sets, one offensively oriented, one defensively oriented. Other than that, for the other gear section, I have two other example sets, which are kind of like the more, if you will, other options. For the weapon, for the first set, I have the Yggdrasil branch, because that allows her to ignore 15% of the enemy's defense. Twilight Armor and Twilight Helmet gives her 16% defense and 16% magic defense. And the last piece of item, I have the Overlord's badge, because it gives 5% to all stats and hit points and it gives her various immunities, like defense reduction immunity, magic defense reduction immunity, and mobility reduction immunity. Finally, assuming you don't have those items either, the very final set of gear that you might consider running for Elusia is, first, you have an SR Axe that gives plus 10% defense. Could also be the Lance version of this, either or. 
Other than that, you have the Gargoyle Jacket and the Loki's Mask. Both of them give 15% defense if you're attacked, so that means 30% defense increase. And finally, you also have Winged Shin Guards because Winged Shin Guards gives defense, and if you're attacked, it gives 10% additional defense. This very last set is very, very debatable. It's definitely not an end gear set at all, but it's pretty common pieces of equipment that you can use. And finally, about enchants, I mentioned how she can run lots of different kinds of enchants. So the very first set, I had two hard rocks and two crystals for 10% defense and magic defense. Another option is to run Tree of Life, because Tree of Life gives 10% hit points and 5% defense and magic defense to herself and all the allies within two blocks of her. Other than Tree of Life though, you can also choose to run Ice, because Ice gives the 5% defense and magic defense, and it also gives you an additional chance to freeze the enemies to attack her. So if you find freeze, freezing to be very, very good, Ice is very, very viable for Elusia. So that would give, make it so that Elusia has two chances of freezing enemies. One chance would come from her talent. If the enemy is in water, they have a 50% chance of getting frozen, and Ice would be the other chance. Other than Ice, the very last enchant that's viable, in my opinion, probably the worst enchant for her, but viable nonetheless, would be Steel. And Steel would be viable because it gives 10% hit points and 10% damage reduction to her. So combined with the last rites, she would have 50% damage reduction right there. These are all viable enchants for her, you know, kind of up to you, depending on what kind of scrolls you have available to you. Choose the enchant that you would want to use. And last but not least, the very final thing to cover would be the class mastery enchants for Elusia. Since Elusia operates by converting her defense into attack, all you're going to want is hit points and defense to maximize her survivability. You'll also want to increase magic defense and skill because it's not as if Elusia will never take magic attacks. So magic defense will always help there. And the skill increase is once again protection against Omega. So what that means is effectively armor and helmet slots should have defense, magic defense, and hit points. The weapon and accessory slot should have hit points, defense, and skill. So I believe the absolute maximum enchant values you can get with this, assuming everything was maximized, is 750 hit points, 65 defense, I think it's 45 magic defense, and skill would be 40 skill. This is the absolute maximum value. And there we have it. So that's everything about the way to build Elusia. So for examples of Elusia in combat, it's almost impossible to find because frankly speaking, everyone uses Juggler and Landius for Apex Arena. So I have not been able to find an example where people built up Elusia to use her. At least not at the top level. This was like the closest battle I could find and it was actually a gold 3 match with lots of weird characters like for example Lana, like Leon, like Betty in the party, and even Pyrotes joins in. So this is not a normal match whatsoever. However, in this battle, Elusia, who does have the ice enchant, as well as her AoE attack, manages to stun and silence so many enemies of player two. There does seem to be potential for Elusia in PvP, but the big problem, of course, is building her up rather than building up another damage dealer. After all, it has to be mentioned that player one with Elusia did lose this battle. Last but not least, this is the way you would get 100% damage reduction for Slepnir. Last right gives you 40% damage reduction. Olivier with his talent and Roaring Bomb adds 20% damage reduction and 10% damage reduction for 70% in total. You get another 20% from Elusia's talent, raising her damage reduction up to 90%. And for the last 10%, you simply need to either build up an amulet to level 50, or you can have Steel Enchant on all the gear for 100% damage reduction. With that said, I have to admit, the easiest way to get 100% damage reduction is probably with Hein, because Hein's with Shrine Maidens gives 75%. Then you just need 30% more, which Olivier gives. Yeah. Nonetheless, you can do Elusia as your tank, and Elusia would do more counterattack damage than Hein would, for sure. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find this video useful to you. And on that note, Nitro out.